Hello everyone and welcome to week six of The Art Show. I'm Alex, a second year political science major, a Viz Art Studio minor, and I'm going to be showing you how to make a 3D string art canvas today. So it looks like this. Um, so it is week six. I know I still have a ton of midterms. I have three midterms in a project. Um, so I'm pretty busy, but this was a good activity to go ahead and wind down and de-stress a bit. So even if you have a lot of stuff going on, take an hour out of your day and do something that will give you a little bit of peace of mind and help you relax a bit. You can use um, to give to your mom for Mother's Day because that is coming up this Sunday. And if you don't want to give it to your mom, you can decorate your room. If you don't want to decorate your room, make it for a friend. Um, it's just a little bit something to bring a little bit of joy to you. And if you're celebrating Mother's Day, something to bring a little bit of joy to your mother. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how to make this 3D art. Um, it's made out of thread, needles, canvas. I'll show you um, the complete list of supplies that you need in just a second again. But um, if you want to make something like this, go ahead and keep on watching. So here's the supplies you're going to need. You're going to need a canvas. I'm using this small one. It's a little bit smaller than a sheet of paper. Just a bit smaller. You're also going to need a sheet of paper. You're going to need some pliers. I have two types. I have a jewelry making pliers and just like skinny or needle nose pliers. I'm going to be using this because they're a little bit easier to use. And then I'm going to need some scissors, some masking tape, as well as a bunch of pins. So I have a box right here and as well as these. Um, and these are just pins. They have little like balls on the tip, different colors. Um, I'm gonna use that. And then I'm also gonna need some string. So you can use different types of string. You can use um, embroidery thread. You can use yarn if you want. I'm gonna use um, sewing thread. So I have a ton of different colors. I'll pick later which color I want. Um, yeah. So that is our supplies. So to get started, you're gonna wanna go ahead and cut out your shape. So the shape that I'm gonna be doing is a heart. Um, it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold my paper in half to create my stencil. Just like that. And then I have a pen or highlighter here. You're just gonna wanna use it and you're gonna wanna draw half a heart, just like that. And it should be on the folded side. So it's kind of hard to see since I used yellow, but um, it's just half a heart. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. And you're going to end up with a heart here. Make sure you like your shape. Mine's pretty good. And you're also going to have this one. So I'm actually going to use this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and tape this to my canvas. Um, actually, I'm going to use the heart shape, change my mind. So I'm going to use this and tape it to my canvas just because it fits a little bit better. And if you want, you can always feel free to go ahead and paint the canvas ahead of time if you don't want a white background. So now I have my heart taped onto my canvas. I try to center it as best as I could. Now I'm gonna get started on some more prep. So you're gonna take your needles or your pins, um, whatever you wanna call them, and you're gonna take your pliers and bend them about halfway through at as good of a 90 degree angle as you go. You're gonna to wanna to do this quite a bit. Alright, so I just um, ended up doing a good chunk of them, of the 
pins that I had and I wanted to do all the white ones first and if I need more then I'll go in with the black ones. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to start off, um, I like to start off with the main points, so you're going to start off here and here or whatever the main points of your um, picture are. So you're just going to, it's kind of like if you've ever seen people get their nose pierced, you're just going to throw it in there and then um, on the back it should be laying pretty flat so it should lay like that um you're gonna do a few and then we'll go in and um, use masking tape you can also use like hot glue or something if you want a stronger um, finish or stronger hold so i'm gonna put these about an inch apart if they're not an inch apart it's just that i'm not great at measuring so yeah Okay, now that I got some, you can see they're falling off and stuff. Um, I'm going to go around to the back, cut myself a piece of masking tape. You can also use a washi tape if you feel that it's strong enough. Um, it's completely up to your preference. I might go over it later with hot glue, but for now I'm just going to use some masking tape. So you're going to go ahead and just lay the masking tape so um, you can manipulate the front and kind of see how you want it to stand and use the masking tape to just keep it that way. So I'm turning the pins as I'm pressing the tape on and pretty much just laying them how I want them to be. Um, they're not like 100% secure, but they're gonna be secure enough for you to do what you need to do. Just go back, make sure you really have them stuck on there. I like to kind of scratch the sides a bit and make sure as much of the glue is sticking as possible. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same for this piece over here. And you can see that I'm just manip manipulating it to stand up the way that I want it to. And I'm going to throw the tape on there and adjust until I get what I want. And this doesn't have to be perfect. This is not the main part of your art. And you're gonna keep doing that the whole way around your item. Alright, so I finally finished putting all my pins standing up and taping the back. Um, I found that it was more useful to tape the back one pin at a time rather than doing a couple and then trying to move them all around to work with the same piece of tape. Um, so now that you've done that, it's pretty secure. I mean, it's not the most uh, stable piece of art, but it's okay. Um, we love, you know, fragility. So I just go in ahead and took out my stencil and I'm left with this pretty cool, you know, it looks cool as is with the pins making the shape, got some nice shadows going on here. Um, but your next step is going to be to pick out your string. So um, let's see what color I want to pick out. Alright, I think I'm going to go with this teal color. Interesting. Or actually, I have a bigger spin of this light blue color. It's still in the same family. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and tie a little like adjusting loop knot. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go like this. You know, like if I were to tie a regular knot, just cross the threads, cross the threads over one another, 
and then throw one in there, but not all the way. And just pull the loop, and you'll have a nice adjusting loop. I'm gonna go ahead and string that around one of the pins. Oops. I chose the base one at the bottom of the heart, tighten it. I'm gonna go ahead and trim that. And then you're just gonna go, this is where your creativity comes out. As long as your string connects to another string on the board. Ooh, if I can get my thread working again. Gotcha, okay. So as long as you can get your string connected to another pin on the board, it's gonna look good. Um, so I'm gonna go across and then, um, here's, I'll show you what I'm doing for this first one. So I'm gonna go across and loop it through this one. And I'm gonna keep doing that. You're gonna wanna be um, pretty gentle since they are just being held down by tape. Um, you're gonna wanna go to another pin that helps it feel um, secure. Ooh, if I can do this, let's see. So I'm using really thin thread, so it's gonna take me a while to get a nice amount of color in here. But I got it. I'm just gonna keep doing that and I'll be back once I have a good portion of it figured out. All right, so check-in time. Um, it's not looking the best so far, but we're in the beginning stages, you know? Um, so I have managed to get the thread around every pin. Um, it's, you know, she's got some color. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is, um, you can see some of the pins are um, at a different angle than they should be. I'm gonna go around and try to um, use the string to my advantage and leverage them out to be um, a little bit more stable. But I'm going to go ahead and change my thread colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I wrapped it around the thread a couple times. Um, so I'm going to do hold a loop of the thread like so, and then go around. I'm going around my last pin. Um, oops! I'm going to go around it um, maybe three or four times. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tuck the loose end into the loop I created and pull. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and trim the excess. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with um, kind of matching contrasting colors. So I went in with the medium blue and I think I'm gonna go in with a dark blue or yeah I can go in with a dark blue or a light blue I think I'm gonna go in with the dark blue or actually maybe even yeah okay so I'm gonna end up doing a purple sorry that was a little bit of interior thoughts going on there and I'm gonna start it off the same way I did the other one and then this again is I'm gonna try to stabilize it a bit more and add more color All right, so what I did um, is I ended up going around the whole thing and outlining. So I went and I just went around each 
in a line and it did add some little structural stability to it. It's by no means um, perfect, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep going through um, so that way I can make it more colorful and it doesn't look so dull. I might switch colors at some point, but for now I'm just going to use the purple and keep that going. Okay, so I finally got it to where I wanted it. So it's got a lot of color. You know, it's just got a little spike, it's okay. We love some spunk. Um, so yeah, she is pretty three-dimensional. So she's floating off the page completely, um, which I think is pretty cool. And you can go ahead and write something in. Um, you can write Happy Mother's Day, Love Me. You can go ahead and embroider something on the canvas if you wanted, or you could leave it as is. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off the same way that I taught you to finish the blue off. So I'm going to wrap a couple times and then feed it into the loop. And then I'll show you guys when I'm done. Alright, so I went ahead and I made sure that I went along the back and retaped any needles that were sticking out. Uh, if you really want to, you can go ahead in with a piece of cardstock or cardboard, cut it to the size, fit it in here, and you'll go ahead and cover all that up so that way you don't have any spiky ends sticking out from the back. On the front, I went ahead and added a little Happy Mother's Day in on the front corner. Um, that's a nice subtle little touch. I did it in purple swig. So goes ahead and matches my purple and light blue theme. Um, so yeah, there is my three-dimensional needle string art on a canvas. Um, you can go ahead and do this as well on a piece of wood with some nails. Um, it would be a little bit more stable, but if you don't have that available and you have a canvas, some string, and some time, you can do this. Thank you so much for watching The Art Show. Make sure you guys tune in again next week for a cool little talk show that we're going to be putting on. Uh, thank you very much and have a good day.